If it looks a little smoky in here, don't worry. The house isn't on fire. We just... We had a band practice, and we sort of kind of overused the fog machine a little bit. So bad, in fact, that it actually got upstairs and made the top floor of the house a little smoky. Yeah, I walked out into the hallway there, and I was like, what the fuck's going on? The, yeah, you bet, bet, bet you had the same thought. Is the house on fire? For just a second, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, thankfully, that's not that's not the case. But instead, uh, you know, we're here uh, we're here in the basement again, and you know, the fog for the most part has subsided. I mean, damn, it it was heavy fog too. I remember like it it bursted out like three times while we were playing the first song, and I remember I walked over and I turned it off, and then I looked over and I could I could the only person I could see was Keith. <laughs> I couldn't see Jake. I couldn't see Keith. And I could fuck seeing JT, but I could see Keith, and he was like right in front of me, drumming and everything, and I'm like, where's everybody else? <laughs> like, what the hell, man? Uh, but thankfully, we were able to get through the practice and nothing bad happened. Oh, except we were only able to run through the set one time because Jacob had to leave early because his girlfriend was getting home early, so... Yeah. That's a whole thing. So, anywho, we're here and we're doing a death battle. Specifically a death battle between the Martian Manhunter, you know, the green, you know, the jolly green individual from the from Mars. And then, of course, you have the Silver Surfer. Uh, you know, Marvel's cheat code, who is basically the harbinger of death for uh, Galactus. I don't really have any knowledge and care about one of these, and that's the Martian Manhunter if you're watching the Justice League show as a oh, teenager. I yeah, guess. John Jones is a John Jones is like a great character. Yeah. And in truth, I like him. He's a more he's a more complete version of Superman, in my opinion. I like him better than I like Superman. By far. Silver Surfer Silver Surfer is you know, has a very tragic history, but also he is very well connected with several groups, specifically the Fantastic Four. Fantastic Four has a lot of history with the Silver Surfer, and they're probably going to talk about it during this. But anyway, we got the death battle queued up here. Let's check it out. Here we go. Martian Manhunter, DC Space Ranger. The Silver Surfer, Marvel's Sentinel of the Spaceways. The depths of space hold secrets beyond <coughs> comprehension, but these sage superheroes have seen more of it than any of us could ever hope to. He's Wiz and I'm Boomstick, and it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. For as long as mankind has looked upon the night sky, the stars have beckoned the brave to search the unknown and explore its endless wonders. Space. Like Dr. Saul Erdell, who's kind of a doctor in the same way Dr. Pepper is a doctor. This guy's got no formal education, but that didn't stop him from messing around with some ancient tech he stumbled upon. He was desperate to live out his boyhood dreams of exploring the cosmos. So with the tech's advanced capabilities, Erdell created a machine that would bring the cosmos to him. He pointed the machine at Mars, pushed a button, and hoped for the best. And it worked! Erdell summoned a real-life Martian right before his very eyes. So remember, kids, when in doubt, just push buttons. Never fail. Damn the it, mysterious Didi. and powerful alien known as Jean Jones, Ooh, the Martian Manhunter, man immediately started... No, did he know? <laughs> started using his incredible powers in front of the doctor, like mind reading and shape shifting. Which was just the tip of Erdell's discoveries. Turns out, Martians have complete control over their bodies and can transform into practically anything, like a freaking dragon, an exact duplicate of Wonder Woman down to her central <laughs> nervous system, or even a totally generic green monster that... <laughs> 
loves Jocko cookies. They can also shoot lasers from their eyes, fire psionic blasts, turn invisible, and phase through anything. Even Green Lantern constructs and force fields that Superman couldn't get through. On top of all that, they've got a crazy healing factor. John has regenerated back from a single limb, tiny pieces, or even a puddle of goo. This display of awe-inspiring power overwhelmed Dr. Erdell's poor human heart and caused him to die in the Martian's arms. Damn! Well, at least he accomplished his goal before he bit the red dust, right? Dr. Erdell wasn't an evil man. Perhaps he could have even been a friend. Uh, yeah, that very, very tragic, but at the same time, it's like, dude snapped you out of nowhere, and it's just like, just all of a sudden, he's just like, dies, he's like, I don't really have a connection to you, but cool. Great. <laughs> right. Anyway, John used his shape-shifting abilities to hide amongst his new world by assuming the identity of a recently deceased detective named John Jones. God, what a crazy coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> Comic book writer, you clever man. Detective John Jones lived a double life on Earth for many years, solving cases and helping as many people as he could from the shadows. But eventually, he stepped out, revealing himself to the world, and helped found the Justice League of America. And John definitely holds his own in the supergroup. He once pulled the Earth alongside Wonder Woman and Superman, who has stated that of all the beings in the known universe, he would be afraid to fight John. And he should be afraid. Superman wouldn't be the first Kryptonian John has gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with. He's man-handled Ultraman, who's basically evil Superman from another universe, and yeah. Superboy Prime, who can shatter reality with his punches, and is also evil Superman from another universe. He took a blast from Asmodel! Yeah, I don't know a lot of specs about the Silver Surfer, but... This isn't... It's not sounded very good for anybody versus Martian Man. This isn't so boating well, well yeah. yeah, for Silver Surfer. King Angel from a literal army of heaven. He's held his own against Darkseid, the manifestation of tyranny in the DC universe. And he's fast enough to catch up to Supergirl and Superman, who we know flies so fast he can burst the bonds of infinity. So basically, he's just as... Silver Age Superman's ridiculous. So it's pretty much infinite speed. Infinite strength. Well, not infinite like, strength. Like, pretty much like regeneration akin to basically Majin Buu. Yeah. Like. I, I, Strength comparable to Dark Side and Superman, which is damn near impossible to comprehend. Not 100% sure what anybody can come up with to actually beat that, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm waiting for Nick to. Yeah, as soon as I drop. I feel like I had something in my eyeball. It's cool. Take your time. I'm gonna say, this uh, break in the action could be brought to you by Clear Cell. Or is it? This is Alloway. Oh, okay. Could be brought to you by Alloway. Which is really nice if you have kitty cats that you're slightly allergic to. <laughs> Your move, Alloway. Sponsor us. Oh. You good? Yeah. Right. Okay. You're good. Strong and just as fast as a bunch of crazy gods and demons. While Jean's strength and speed are obviously very impressive, it's also no secret that his greatest asset is his mind. Yeah. He's one of the most powerful telepaths in all of the DC universe. He reads minds, duh, but he can also shut them down altogether. And he once made Mr. Mixel Plick Mixel Plixiglass Mr. <laughs> Mixed Pickles <laughs> Fuck your name. That's <laughs> It really does kind of look like mixed pickles when you look at it for just a second. Mits, Mr. Mitsuplik. Kill plus Tim. In order to trick... It, it, basically, where he's a magical being, you have to trick him into saying his oh, name backwards. Mr. Mitsuplik. Mitsuplik. I just remember it from watching the old Super Friends con cartoon back in the day. Because he was an adversary several times whatever anyway he got him to subconsciously say his own name backwards which god only knows because i can't say it forwards which canceled out his powers his psychic defenses were strong enough to protect the justice league against a worldwide telepathic attack and his ability to sense people's feelings is so strong he can feel every sentient being in the entire galaxy god, hey, plastic man <laughs> 
Friggin' plastic, man. He once out thought Perpetua from the Omniverse. Who's that, you ask? Oh, just the freaking creator of the entire multiverse. She's basically the god of everything. Jean needed to connect his consciousness with everyone on Earth before Perpetua could catch up. He pulled this off by using his mental abilities within the span of Planck time, literally the smallest possible measurement of time. In the time it takes you to count to one, Jean could count to one and fly across the universe and back over 200 sextillion times. Ah! Yeah, like, this doesn't seem like a fair death battle. This is not... A, okay, maybe... I didn't actually know the Martian Manhunter was this ridiculous. Like, I've they, only they watched They nerf Justice him a League lot. Movies, they nerf him a lot in the, the shows and stuff like that. But... God dang, dude. He out-thought God. He's a faster thinker than God. And it didn't end there. John took a punch from her and walked away with just a bloody nose. And when she disintegrated him into basically nothing, he regenerated back from a hit from God. Batman has said that in order to kill John for good, you would have to literally destroy every single atom in his body one by one. God damn. Yeah, it's pretty much exactly the same so way they had to beat Majin Buu, isn't it? Yeah. Basically, they had to vaporize them into nothing. Mm -hmm. I'd say we changed this guy's name to Martian God Hunter or something. He's basically invincible, right? Not quite. Jean is not without weakness. He has a very real vulnerability to fire. At times, it has completely overwhelmed him to the point where he loses control of his body. And not just literal fire, either. Jean was once tricked into just thinking he was surrounded by fire, and that was enough for him. Even still, uh, Jean... That, yeah, because... That was the thing in Justice League Doom, Batman pointed out that there is a way to beat the Martian Manhunter. He's like, he is like, he is invulnerable to a lot of things, but fire is something that he is very prominently, like, very prominently, like, 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 tries to avoid. So, Batman was like, if you could think, trick him into thinking that he would, <clears throat> that he was constantly on fire then he wouldn't be able to do anything. What they actually thought of in the film was actually pretty genius. They gave him a spiked drink, and it basically caused a chemical reaction that caused his, like, body to burst into flames. And it was actually really genius, and Batman eventually, like, thought of, like, how to counteract it and helped him. John has been able to overcome this weakness. He's fought enemies with fire abilities and even taken hits from fire attacks, which leads me to believe the weakness, while potent and still able to cause real physical harm, is mainly psychosomatic. What are you doing? I heard what you said. Weakness to fire is just in your head. I'm being a living god! Another win in the mind <laughs> column for sure. And to think there's a whole planet of these guys out there. Unfortunately, that's no longer the case. Before Dr. Erdell's strange experiment, Jean's own brother used the Martians' telepathic connection to each other against them. And the entire planet was plagued with Ron Mir's curse. As long as they stayed telepathically connected, every Martian was vulnerable to a mental fire that would overwhelm them and burn them from the inside out. Which sadly worked very well, because the fear of fire is something Jean shares with his fellow Martians. Centuries earlier, the Guardians of the Universe, a group of immortal aliens who run the Green Lantern Corps, feared that the Martian race could become too strong. So they programmed the Martians with that genetic weakness to fire. Jean Damn. was able to survive the fiery curse by cutting off his mental connection to his people, including his family. Unfortunately, his wife, Myria, and their daughter couldn't live with the isolation, and he had no choice but to watch them give in and burn alive oh, damn Racked with grief and survivor's guilt, Jean was left to wander his homeworld all alone. His only solace being shape-shifting into his lost loved ones to convince himself they were still alive. Oh my god, Jesus, Jean! That is so sad! That yeah. pain has undoubtedly shaped who Jean is. In the, the episode where they actually focused on Jean and his uh, you know, pursuit to reclaim his family... It's actually it actually points out the tragedy and also it and also, you know, it shows how easily like even the most powerful beings and the with the brightest minds and the greatest minds can still be tricked into into giving in whenever the reward is is what they truly desire. Mm -hmm. And and it took John 
mentally connecting with the person who was trying to stop him because the person he mentally connected with had gone through the exact same thing that that John was trying to be tricked into and John saw that wow this is going to happen to me if I don't stop and it's it was a great episode of Justice League it's one of my favorite actually I think it was a trio of episodes I think it was like a to to go over Martian Manhunter's history and everything in fact, the trauma he held onto so tightly formed a literal spiritual connection with those lost souls. A telepathic connection so strong, it kept them from finding peace in an afterlife. Let me say that again. His grief and telepathy were so strong, he prevented an entire race of people from moving on to the afterlife. It wasn't until years later that John could return to Mars and release those souls by finally letting go. And not to forget them, but to embrace his new life and his new home. A place he would defend time and time again to make sure the Earth never suffers a fate similar to Mars. To experience Aww. all of that. To truly know what it feels like to be alone in the vast universe. But continue to use your wisdom and power to help those in need is what makes the Martian Manhunter such a noble hero. On a planet packed with other incredible heroes, John really has set himself apart. He's risen through the ashes and emerged the heart and soul of the Justice League. This episode of Death Battle brought to you by a show I'm probably not going to be watching because. Hmm. Zen Law, a virtual utopia free from any and all crime, poverty, and disease. And home to Norin Rad, which I've got to say is the sickest, most radical name I have ever heard in my entire life. <laughs> he was a brainy kid who was raised to live a life of reason and intellect over one of gnarly adventure. That is, until the technologically advanced society came under threat from the devourer of worlds, Galactus. So Norin struck up a deal with the world muncher. In exchange for sparing his planet, Mr. Red offered to leave his home behind, become Galactus's herald, and seek out new planets for him to scarf down. And once Galactus agreed to the deal, he imbued his new herald with the power cosmic. Trans Forming him into the, the Silver, Silver Surfer. Surfer. An equally tubular name. Two for two. Wow, you rarely see it. The power cosmic grants True. the Surfer near unlimited energy, as well as matter manipulation, phasing, super strength, speed, and invulnerability, just to name a few. The Surfer's basically got all of Galactus's space magic, just on a smaller scale. And Galactus uses that power to fight guys like the Inbetweener, an abstract being from the overspace. The Surfer used the power cosmic to serve Galactus diligently for nearly a hundred years, during which he ensured that the planets consumed were devoid of sentient life. That is, until the server accidentally offered up a planet with life, which drove him crazy with guilt. So Galactus tried his best to suppress the server's emotions, erase the painful memories, and make it easier for him to find planets with tasty, delicious life, guilt-free. How nice of him. And it worked for a while until the surfer reached Earth. Galactus's yeah. mighty mind manipulation wasn't enough to bury the surfer's true nature for good. With the help of Alicia Masters and the Fantastic Four, the surfer turned against his overlord and saved the Earth from being eaten. But even after all that, Galactus just let the surfer keep his powers. At any point, he could have just taken them back. Being the source of the surfer's powers, yes, he could. But Galactus has continued to let the surfer have the power cosmic out of respect for his first herald. Damn! See, that's the kind of respect I'm asking from you. Anyway, ever since those <laughs> mental gymnastics with... Keep dreaming. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Boomstick, you, you, you lofty goal, but... Not, not happen. Galactus, the surfer made sure nothing like that would ever happen again. And he's been successful. Like when Psycho Man failed to trick the surfer with his illusions. Or when he was briefly trapped in the Supreme Intelligence's mind when it was using the Mind Stone. With some of those mental threats behind him, he could finally take to the spaceways, kick ass, and monologue about the meaning of life in the universe. All of which he's quite good at, especially that last one. It's thanks to the abilities afforded to him through all that cosmic energy. It's seriously crazy. He can rearrange the molecules of anything he wants into anything he wants. He can force you to just feel pain in general, and he can even control elements, not just earth, wind, and fire, but anything in a boogie wonderland like gravity. Wow, dude, you're really gonna... Oh my god. Earth, wind, and fire references, the boogie wonderland, Jesus. What are you gonna say? Like, it just like, do you remember the 21st of September? 
gravity and the weather. He's got enough power and energy inside him that he once created an infant star to serve as a new light source in a universe devoid of light. So just when he needed it, he was able to pop out a baby son? That's convenient. That's the power cosmic. But we can't forget about the sick board he shreds the stars with. This thing's basically an extension of himself. He can transform it into a sweet sword or into pure cosmic energy. And if it breaks, he can just form a new one. On his board, the surfer has traveled at incalculable speeds on multiple occasions. He can fly faster than Thor and even once flew so fast he reached the future. Even without his board, he once broke free from energy shackles that would zap away his power within the next Next nanosecond. Nile bra, me what's out so so fast he reached the future. That's just traveling faster than light, isn't it? Not necessarily. Uh in order to do I Traveling faster than light that negates like time's effect on you basically. Mm -hmm. But into the future, that is basically you That's just eighty eight miles per hour. <laughs> No, wait, that's the past. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, no, it's to the past and the future. Yeah, you just have to go 88 miles an hour. Yeah. But, but the thing is, with uh, with speed, with 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 speed, you have to you would basically have to break the fabric of reality. You know, break past like you know, basically bend space time and just like pop through into the future. That's basically how that works. But honestly, in terms of in terms of the flow of the universe and like the flow of like matter and everything, as our current understanding, it's it's impossible to travel through time. I'm just wondering if they're gonna use that as like if they're gonna consider that to be faster or slower than Martian Manhunter. I don't know. You know what I mean, I don't know. Type of universal destruction. He had to surf out of all of existence as it was being torn apart. Now I I've seen some choice waves in my Looks day, like somebody but forgot their uh, sunscreen. Yeah. Yeah, SP, a little SPF will do you good there, Boomstick. <laughs> That's one too best for watching on the beach with a brew. You're uh, hitting it real hard with all this surfing lingo. He's honestly not that kind of guy at all. Righteously disagree with you, dude. You are carving up my brain waves into an A-frame swell that I just can't bail. Slap I'm waxed, him. man. Slap him waxed. on the sunburn. The Silver Surfer is a tragic <laughs> figure who is always weighing his choices through every angle of morality. Like when he set out to destroy the new host of the Star Brand, an energy source that grants his wielders virtually infinite power, capable of wiping out all life on Earth. The Star Brand seems to choose a new unknowing host at random. Could be a good guy, could be the most evil person to ever exist. But despite that threat, the Surfer spared the new Star Brand once he found out she was carrying a child. He decided to bear the weight of any potential consequences on his own shoulders instead of squashing any and all hope that the child would use that power for good. I get it. He's a righteous dude on a surfboard. Exactly. And in the surfer's case, a keen sense of morality also comes with a keen sense of his surroundings in general. He can see enemies even when they're invisible and can sense incoming threats to the point where he can sense someone approaching even before they've left their own home. He can also absorb energy his opponents throw at him. Anything from psionic energy to a freaking star. The surfer can even do it when he's on death's door. Hey, Wiz, what do you think the doormat on death's door says? Probably like, knock him dead, right? <laughs> I don't, what are you talking? Now, it does take a lot to get the surfer to. <laughs> if it's Jean Grey, please use back entrance. God dang it. For me, I, I think Death's Doorstep, the welcome mat on it literally says, uh, welcome, wipe your fucking feet. To death's door. He's taken a blast from the Infinity Stones, survived being smashed into pieces, crashed into the Big Bang, and played catch with a star. He caught it and then threw it right back at that punk Deadpool. Ha! <laughs> I hope you like a big ball of gas in your face, you tool! Reed Richards, the smartest man alive, has said that the Surfer is probably the most powerful being in all the galaxy. And even after years spent drifting through the galaxy, he's still built strong bonds, like with the Fantastic Four, the Defenders, and with people like Don Greenwood. But somehow, he always ends up alone in space, searching. Searching for answers, searching for beings that need his help, searching for something that could replace the home that he lost all those years 
ago. Only to be weighed down by the guilt of his servitude and the pain of his sacrifice, which was ultimately done in vain. Cause it doesn't seem to matter what the server does, Zen La is destined for destruction. At this point, his home world has been destroyed four times over. Despite Damn. it all, this tragic hero still Damn, manages yeah. to take everything in stride as he surfs the stars and fights tirelessly to preserve every being's right to live. Okay. This episode is Jesus. That was a long ad. Okay. All right, the combatants are set, and we've run the data through all possibilities. It's time for a death battle. I still think Martian Manhunter's got this. Yeah. I mean, I'm kind of biased on this one. Like, there's not a lot of DC that I pick over Marvel characters because Marvel, MCU, like up until Endgame, kind of like won me over to the Marvel side. Mm -hmm. But like, definitely Batman, Martian Manhunter, a few others, like specifically like. Uh, well, it's, really, Batman and Martian Manhunter and Green Lantern, I guess, are like the three that like are from DC that I'm really just like they're just too fucking cool to, you know. No, and I agree like, with that. To, I agree, they're very fucking cool. They're, they're some of my favorites. So, <laughs> like, but yeah, Martian Manhunter, I just am biased towards because I never really saw or read or any like you know I've never consumed any Silver Sil Silver Surfer. Material, I think maybe the animated like Fantastic Four cartoon. Yeah, that I had might the, have seen him in once or twice. Like, yeah, but I just know Martian Manhunter so much better, so that's why I feel like I'm well, biased. With Silver it. Surfer, I yeah, I watched the TV series like you were talking about. Also, the Fantastic Four movies that came out. The second one had the Silver Surfer in it, and it was it was pretty good. Yeah, I remember they had the Rise of the Silver Surfer or whatever. Yeah, but I never actually watched it. It was. It was all right. I'll, I'll give it like a six, maybe a seven out of ten. But yeah, the the whole deal with uh, with that is just it. <laughs> it it was a misfire because you know you had you had the whole Fantastic Four, and there was some miscasting. Not gonna say who, but there was some miscasting. Anyway, yeah. So Martian Manhunter versus Silver Surfer, death battle. Let's see who wins. In all of my journeys, I have never seen anything quite like this. I assumed your journeys would have made you rather familiar with places like this, Norinrad. Or, should I say, Silver Surfer. Now, <laughs> tell me why you have summoned me here. <sighs> Enough! <laughs> what are you hiding? Tell me your secrets. I must end this. Holy shit. We literally cut a planet in prime in thrice. Uh oh. Into the fire. Oh crap. Nothing can best Martian might. Your will is admirable, but will alone 
is not enough. Feel the pain. You and I possess the same knowledge that only one of us can survive, and we know not why. I hope you can live with the uncertainty. Victory comes with no certain satisfaction. I may never know why we were made to fight. If violence is ever truly justified, but perhaps <laughs> there is something worthy in the battle. Myria. Something beyond my understanding. Damn. Damn, really? doing why are we forcing such beautiful souls to fight to the death uh both the silver surfer and the martian manhunter I, were saying, I felt like there was some like a bit of meta yeah like uh there with the what they were talking like about. eventually i think they would it's eventually like, why won't we fight why are we fighting each other i don't know but we must like kind of thing yeah with whereas... all our knowledge we can't even know like it's because of this show yeah <laughs> you know? whereas i think they would have basically looked stopped and be like why are we fighting I don't know. <laughs> and then they look at the camera and they're like, hmm. It seems as though we are being, like, we're being watched. <laughs> and all of a sudden it's like, uh oh. And basically, I'm not going to say we would have had like a Segata Sanshiro uh, Chuck Norris ending where it was a double KO and there was no winner. But instead, you know, we had the, uh, like, we had the whole thing with, um, what was it? Deadpool versus Pinkie Pie, and both of them basically broke reality and broke the fourth wall, and were just like, uh, I think they both basically fought. I can't remember if they basically both fucked off or whoever won. I can't remember. I don't know. Didn't but, see that one. But yeah. Anyway. For our nearly powerful beings, each with very wide power sets. So they both had counters for almost everything they could throw at each other. They could both phase through objects, rearrange molecules, and regenerate their own bodies. But arguably the biggest thing on the Martian Manhunter's side was his formidable telepathy. The surfer has had his memories erased and his emotions manipulated by Galactus. So it would stand to reason that Jean could pose a mental threat to the surfer. But the surfer has resisted mental attacks many times. When Psycho Man played on the surfer's guilt and pretended to be his lost love, the surfer saw right through it, and he escaped the supreme intelligence's mind when it was using the freaking Mind Stone. These two could have gone toe-to-toe -to -toe around the universe for a long time, but when it came down to it, the question was, who had the power to put the other down for good? They both have some serious healing factors and have come back from basically nothing, but if ending Martian Manhunter meant destroying his every atom one by one, the surfer has the means to make that happen thanks to the seemingly endless well of energy that is the power cosmic it's truly an overwhelming source of unlimited power and outside of galactus stripping the power away from him the surfer is never without it it's like a battery even if jean could drain all of the cosmic energy the surfer can just recharge it and he's used that power to destroy planets defeat galactus level threats and can basically accomplish anything with it while both of these philosophic heroes tend to hold back out of a respect for life there's obviously no holding back here and the depth of silver surfer abilities gave him the win. This Martian was harsh in his mellow, so the surfer had to wave goodbye. Bodacious Cowabunga Hang Ten Ninja Turtles. The winner is the Silver Surfer. It's kind of what I was, was thinking it would boil down to is like the regeneration aspect in a way. Just sort yeah. of indirectly Else, did. So don't miss out. It's like which one could prevent the other one from regenerating essentially. Yeah, true. Oh god, uh, Bill Cypher versus the Chaos Dragon? Discord, I couldn't remember. Bill Cypher versus Discord, I couldn't remember the name of it. another My Little Pony thing, isn't it? I guess, yeah, but I thought I'd seen it before. I was like, oh, the Dragon of Chaos, I think, is the name of it. But uh, Discord, Chaos, eh, they go hand in hand. But Bill Cypher, I'm pulling for Bill Cypher because... Gravity Falls is a much better show than MLP. Yeah, I said it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. No, oh. I didn't have to watch My Little Pony or anything like that. 
<laughs> mm. Which a lot of people would probably disagree with. They're like, how do you know if you haven't watched it? I know. I watched like two, three episodes, and I was just like, yeah, not for me. But I watched Gravity Falls the whole way through, and I'm just like, this is one of the best shows of all time. Easily. It's one of the best kids shows ever of all time. It's it's amazing. Anyway, so yeah. That was Martian Manhunter vs. Silver Surfer, DC vs. Marvel, the death battle. And uh, yeah, that was a good one. I mean, I wasn't expecting Silver Surfer to, to win, but there we go. I guess it just goes to show you, you don't really know until the fighting is done. So, anywho, I think that's going to do it. So, till next time, everybody, signing off. I'm Nate. I am Nick. Y'all be good people. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.